Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And if you have the means to support me, please do so on patreon.com slash gremlita. Hello, my beautiful doves. I don't know if you've all yet had the pleasure or displeasure <laughs> of watching He's All That, the gender swap remake of the 90s teen rom-com, She's All That. I watched both of them for the first time in a double feature moment a couple days ago and I just have a lot of thoughts so I thought I would make a video about it. There will be spoilers for both movies so just beware beyond this point. First, I would like a chance to talk to y'all about BetterHelp, which is the sponsor for today's video. I've been seeing a therapist for almost two years. Before YouTube, I was very stressed out. I was unemployed. I had an unstable housing situation, and I found so much relief in talking to someone professional. BetterHelp is an online service that assesses your personal needs and matches you with a licensed professional therapist. You fill out a form, and then within 48 hours, you can start communicating with them. It's a secure service, it's not a crisis hotline, and you're talking to a real professional counselor. It's also more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and they have financial aid options as well. BetterHelp has over 20,000 counselors who may not be locally available near you, and it's a service available worldwide. You can log in at any time to send a message to whoever you're matched with. You can also easily and freely change counselors if you're not satisfied. It took me three tries before I found the therapist that I've been working with today. You can also schedule weekly phone or video sessions because I know with the pandemic, um, going in person may not seem ideal for a lot of people. Visit betterhelp.com slash That's better H-E-L-P to take charge of your mental health, to take care of yourself. I also have a special offer where you can get your first month 10% off if you use my URL. I just want to explain the gist of both of these movies in case you don't remember or you just don't plan on watching, no judgment. The main plot of She's All That is that Zach Seiler, the most popular boy in school, schemes to transform slash Pygmalion slash Pretty Womanify, um, unpopular artistic social outcast Lainey Boggs, as part of a bet that he and his friend made with each other. The bet is that he could take any girl in the school and make her prom queen. Of course, because it's a 90s rom-com, Lainey and Zach do end up falling for each other. The main plot of He's All That is pretty much the same thing, except gender swapped and made to reflect the relevant and sad times we live in. So, the protagonist and mega Instagram influencer, Paget Sawyer, takes on the case of transforming the unpopular, artistic, anti-social media nihilist Cameron Queller into the hottest boy in school as part of a bet she makes with her friend. And of course, because this is a 2020s rom-com, Paget and Cameron end up falling for each other too. I have a lot of problems with the makeover trope, which I did an entire dedicated video to a couple months ago. Um, so I'd give that a watch if you want to hear me go more in depth about it because I'm not going to for this video. Just in terms of makeovers on guys, because I didn't cover that in the last video, I think it's in general less insidious because a lot of the times, or at least in the purposes of this movie, and he's all that, he doesn't get like a major makeover. You know, they just cut his hair and he gets new clothes. Whereas I feel I feel like makeovers for women in these 90s and early 2000s movies is quite transformative. Like they straighten their naturally curly hair, they put on makeup, they pluck their eyebrows, they get bikini waxes. It's a lot more invasive and it's a lot more about changing their natural features. I still think it's bad to change what you're comfortable with to please your partner, but um, that's just my two cents. If you want the rest of my money, go click on that video. <laughs> Overall, I thought they were. Can I get a drum roll, please? Both bad movies. Yes, I said it. <laughs> Maybe because I didn't watch She's All That as a kid, I didn't have the nostalgia for it that I think a lot of people have. I just went and watching it for the first time as a jaded adult, already tired of the makeover transformation concept. The makeover transformation is literally her getting a haircut and taking off her glasses. <laughs> like they tried to make us think she wasn't beautiful in the before scenes, but honestly, I thought she was cute the whole time. With this attitude towards the original, I didn't have particularly high expectations for He's All That. And even though the director was the same director as the one for Mean Girls and my personal favorite, Freaky Friday, um, I still had a sense that this movie, He's All That, was more of like a cash grab movie using Addison Rae's star power over anything else. 
Like, let's be honest here. The girl is no Lindsay Lohan. I feel like she was really just cast for her name. And yes, that comes off a little shadier than I mean it to because I don't know anything about Addison Rae. I learned about her for the first time like this year. I watched the 7 Days 7 Looks video on Vogue that she was invited to do and using that video as reference, the character she plays is just herself. <laughs> Hey Vogue, it's Addison Rae, and I'm going to show you what I wear in a week. It's me, Paget Head to Toe here, where we talk about makeovers, self-improvement, and how to become the most spectacular you. So with that information, the movie kind of just felt like a PR stunt to increase her likability, which, you know, whoever is her manager, they're definitely working overtime. I also thought they were trying to do a little bit of a progressive spin because the old movie has been criticized a lot for being patriarchal and sexist and carrying these like negative themes. And they were probably in the writing room looking for another reboot to make and just being like, oh, wait a minute. What if we just made it the guy who needed the makeover? That's kind of feminism. Isn't it? It's not. So let's get started by comparing how these two movies differ because, you know, even though I said I didn't like either of the movies, I thought She's All That was the lesser of two evils. I was at least entertained by She's All That. I thought it was enjoyable. I thought it was a product of its time. It was just something that I personally didn't really enjoy watching in 2021 and being the big age that I am now. But for He's All That... There's just, there's just a lot. Okay, let's get started. In He's All That, the reason why Paget wants a new boyfriend is because she lost a ton of followers in probably the most unrealistic canceling story I've ever heard. So the writers were trying to convince us that in the year of 2021, the internet sympathized with her ex-boyfriend Jordan, who was caught on Instagram Live cheating on her in real time because she reacted by crying and throwing donut holes at him. And rather than her followers supporting her, and let's remember, uh, if you follow someone on social media, more than likely you actually favor them. You like them to a certain degree. So rather than her followers supporting her, over 200 people unfollow her because she's turned into a meme. I'm still that girl. No, you're a meme. Like, am I just crazy? Like, do I understand the internet? I feel like if you become a meme, you gain followers. You don't lose followers. So anyways, backing a new boyfriend is supposed to help her win back her 1 million followers so that her sponsor doesn't pull out of their agreement so she can pay for college because she depends on this one sponsorship for her college funds. In contrast, the She's All That original had way lower stakes. Zach's ex-girlfriend Taylor dumps him for this reality TV D-lister she met at a beach party um, who I like to call Hot Shaggy. Irritated, he declares that she is totally replaceable. His best friend doesn't believe he can replace someone as hot as Taylor, and so they enter this bet together. The She's All That plot is a lot simpler. It revolves around petty exes, prom drama, um, high school social hierarchy, and that's also why I think a lot of people, a lot of girls, liked this movie growing up. The fantasy of a popular hot boy falling for a mousy girl that no one cares about is still realistic enough to make you think it could happen to someone or even to you if you were like me and just projected your wildest dreams onto uh, the media you consumed. On the other hand, he's all that is totally unrelatable. I don't know how many high schoolers can relate to being a mega influencer, having a mega influencer boyfriend, living in a very wealthy area of Los Angeles, and being at the risk of losing makeup sponsorships. I, being a YouTuber, just think it's really funny how inaccurate they portray influencer dumb as. It doesn't actually make sense to me that she is so at the mercy of this one sponsorship because if you have a million followers on Instagram, on TikTok or whatever, like there are tons of brands dying to work with you. You are a hot topic. You would have no problem replacing that sponsor. At first, I thought Kourtney Kardashian was her agent and then I was like, oh, I guess if she's dropped by her agency, that's going to be tougher to reorient and look for a new manager. But Courtney's just this random PR lady for one brand. And I don't know if Addison is just a bad actress or maybe the script writers just didn't want to 
be too real and tug at too many heartstrings <laughs> because her character feels no like real mounting pressure throughout the whole movie about having to please so many people and having to maintain a certain persona. I don't consider myself a mega influencer in any capacity, but the reality of having a job where you're speaking to a ton more people than you would ever speak to in real life is that people do form judgments about you. It's a very mentally draining process to feel like you have to justify yourself to people who just don't know you. It's very draining to think of yourself as a personal brand and see your self-worth as something that can be quantified. It's definitely better than any job I've ever had in my life just because I've had some really shitty jobs and I'm so grateful to have this job, but... I guess if you're going to do a movie about like an influencer, I would have liked to see at least that reality of it. At least with a movie like The Princess Diaries, which is pretty unrelatable as a concept, we see Mia actually break down under the pressures of being royal, which makes the story feel more real. And this is why I feel like this movie was just a PR stunt for Addison. Because the movie implies that Addison is as bubbly and sweet off camera as she is on camera. Her character is exactly the same 24 seven in this movie. Q, that's amazing. <laughs> so how are you gonna ask her? And don't get me even started when she starts singing an auto-tuned rendition of Teenage Dream. Passing it off as just this simple spur of the moment karaoke session. <laughs> Like, is this the definition of camp? Is this what Susan Sontag has been trying to tell us? The kicker is that her best friend in the movie, Quinn, is actually played by Myra Malloy, and I don't know if I pronounced that name right, so I'm really sorry, but she is a professional singer. So And she actually won Thailand's Got Talent when she was 13 years old. And they made her sound like this. Just to be jealous of me. No doubt to make Addison sound better. See what I mean? It's a PR stunt. As for the other characters, I thought Cameron was a little insufferable. He reminded me of Cole Sprouse's character on Riverdale. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in. Just this, you know, really edgy, I'm cooler than thou. I only listen to old school punk bands. Fuck high school attitude. But at the same time, he falls in love with Paget when she's singing a literal Katy Perry song, even though just like 20 minutes before, he complained about modern music. How do you have to hate everything remotely popular? No, see, I hate things that suck. Whether they're popular or not is outside my control. Uh, what about music? Thanks, only weird old stuff no one else listens to. And then he gets on stage with her to sing. <laughs> so later in the movie, he does admit that he was once part of the Glee Club before his mom died. And then since she's died, he's become a lot more reserved, closed up, isolated, et cetera, et cetera. We love a damaged male love interest. And it's hard for me to believe that just because Paget showed interest in his horse obsession one time, that he decided to conquer his fears and get back on stage for her. Is it really that easy? Are boys really that simple? Like you just do one thing they wanna do for an hour and then suddenly they'll put themselves in an uncomfortable position just to please you? On top of not really knowing you for that long? Yeah, I don't think they had boys like that at my high school because if they did, I'd be a different person today. <laughs> Cameron is a photographer. That's his big hobby. That's his big dream. And he shits on influencers for their so-called photography. And he even makes fun of Paget for having to document everything that she has to do and making duck faces and whatnot. You take pictures? What's the difference? Too vast to even explain. This boy literally doesn't use social media because he thinks he's above it. Wait, he made one tweet in 2019 and all it said was no. So my question is, how could he possibly end up with her? I feel like her vlogging everything that they do together would be extremely annoying to him. Um, seriously? More? Zach and Lainey made a lot more sense as a couple. Lainey was very standoffish. She was very avoidant when Zach first started to talk to her. Hello. The I thought I said I was busy. There's a scene when he comes to her performance art club and he's pressured as a newbie to get on stage and improvise something and he does and he actually really likes the experience. Being up there and not knowing what to do, it kind of a rush, isn't it? Yeah. At the end of the movie, he even says he wants to go into performance art as a major. You don't take art. 
Yeah, but I'm thinking more along the lines of performance art. Even though he initially went to please Lainey and win her over, he discovered he really enjoyed it, and from this point in the story, they now have something in common. And then later, Lainey goes to the beach and has fun playing volleyball with Zach's friends. She opens up way more socially, and even though the movie does have its misogynistic faults, I feel like what they did well was having these two characters dabble in each other's interests, discovering they like both of their interests, and then kind of coming together in that way. While Paget does take riding lessons from Cameron, there's never like a moment of joy or realization where you feel like she's actually doing it because she likes riding and not because she likes Cameron. Cameron also says he loves to travel and I guess Paget does too because at the end of the movie, she ditches college and becomes a travel vlogger. But there wasn't like a spark of realization at any point in the movie where she was like, traveling is what I'm really passionate about. This is what I really wanted to do in life. I feel like the whole doing what you want to do after high school is one thing that teen rom-coms have done well. Like in uh, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, The Last Movie, and even in High School Musical 3, both characters in the relationship choose to go where they want to go. They choose the college they want to go to and don't just settle on going to the same college to stay together. If Paget genuinely showed more interest in not going to college and in traveling the world, then I would have accepted the ending much more. But when she says this, I lost my self-respect. I lost my college fund. I lost my friends. But the only thing I truly care about losing is your brother. Girl, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> How is that a good message for young teens watching this movie? You lost your college fund, which sounds fake because you're a huge influencer, so you definitely could make that college fund back with a new sponsor. But okay, let's, for the purposes of argument, you lost your college fund, and the most disappointing thing to happen to you was losing a boy you met like a month ago. What? In the original She's All That, they don't really go into the graduation plans, which I think was really smart. It was very ambiguous. They kind of talk about like Lainey going to art school still and then Zach saying like, I want to go into art too. And maybe they go to the same art school. Maybe they don't. The movie just ends at graduation. And I think that was perfect. The vibe I got from Lainey is that art was her number one priority the whole movie. It was just nice. What now? I don't know. Art school. And speaking of bad messaging, there's also a moment in He's All That when Cameron shows Paget his darkroom and he implies that she looks better without makeup. Keeping your talent locked away, what are you hiding from? You know, I could ask you the same question. I'm talking about this. That sincerely makes me want to gag. Um, is her talent being naturally pretty? Is that supposed to be like an equally good compliment? And if a guy rubbed off my lipstick, I would be out of his house immediately. Because first of all, lipstick does not come off that nicely. We're not Mulan. It's gonna smudge all over my face. Secondly, I got ready to come over to have this date. Everything is together as a package and you have the audacity to damage the art that I created. And Paget is a beauty influencer. She is the makeup girl, as she says. I know it sounds conceited, but Makeovers are my thing. That is something that she enjoys. I know that girl was blending her face for at least an hour. Finally, let's talk about the costumes. So Denise Wingate did the costumes, which is interesting because she also did the costumes for the first She's All That movie. And I think that's interesting because I actually really liked the costumes in She's All That, and I thought the costumes in He's All That we're very confusing. <laughs> in Fashionista, they wrote that Wingate immersed herself in the new world of TikTok to stack Paget's wardrobe with brands an actual teen influencer would wear. But I honestly don't have any idea what set of TikToks she was on. Here's a couple of sins committed. Scoop neck chevron shift dress, wedge espadrille sandals, outdated floral print romper, governor's wife riding blazer, Another questionable printed scoop neck dress, a waterfall cardigan, and skinny jeans? No! No! Skinny jeans? Wait! Cancel! Oh. 
The dress at the end of the movie, it's red and it's definitely supposed to reference the red dress in the first movie, which is a nice idea. But I just thought the execution was bad because based on the closet that they created for Paget, it just didn't make sense for her to be wearing this dress. I would expect her to wear something pastel and pink, not something like this bold. And don't get me wrong, Lainey's red dress didn't fit her personal style either, but Zach brought it to her. That's why she ended up wearing it. It would have been a lot cuter and made more sense if Paget's mom handed her down the dress because that would explain why it's not her style, but also because Paget's mom is played by Rachel Lee Cook, who actually played Lainey in the first movie. So if they wanted to kind of draw this loose continuity uh, between the two movies, that would have been really great. But as I said, Paget wears a lot of pink. That was definitely purposeful. In an interview, Wingate said that she, the production designer Maria Casso, and director Mark Waters felt like pink was her theme. That would be her world, and she was just this girly girl. It worked for her. By the way, I don't want to make anyone feel bad about wearing any of the clothes that I previously, like, counted it as sins. I'm just saying that they're sins because it doesn't work for Addison's character, like in this context. She's supposed to be a mega influencer, which means she would wear trendy brands, Y2K silhouettes and pieces. And I feel like there's no excuse either because taking a peep at Addison's actual Instagram, they could have copied some of her actual fits that reflect the teen influencer aesthetic way more. Like, I don't think Ms. Addison, a TikTok star on a platform that was dominated by Gen Z versus millennial skinny jeans discourse just earlier this year, would be caught dead in a pair of them in real life. <laughs> As for the side characters, I actually thought Cameron and Nisha were dressed pretty well. Cameron wearing clothes that he allegedly bought years ago makes sense because he doesn't care about shopping or fashion. Oh, don't listen to Cam. He's been wearing the same three plaids since 2017. The beanie, the plaid button down, the band tees, I'll give him a 90s grungier vibe, which works for his, you know, rebel attitude. His best friend Nisha wears overalls pretty consistently. I think Nisha's vintage style works really well for her character. I also associate wearing overalls and vintage prints as being more creative, more earthy. The way she's dressed also reminds me of Lainey Boggs, who represented those traits as well. Quinn also has a very distinctive look, very clueless slash gossip girl. It's fine, I don't hate it. But Alden, the main antagonist, wears a sequined bomber jacket, ripped skinny jeans. Once again, I don't understand why they would dress an aspiring influencer in trends from 10 years ago. In contrast, She's All That did a really good job with um, capturing the average American teenager from the late 90s. From the slip dresses, to the tube tops, to the baggy pants, to these freaking goth looks. They're all so good. Um, the mean popular girl is all dressed in pink, totally appropriate for a 90s rom-com that suffers from many patriarchal tropes. The jock popular boy is wearing a Letterman varsity jacket. And the offbeat artist is wearing vintage overalls and aprons. And I actually think that the first movie had a lower budget than this movie. So you don't need that high of a budget to do an accurate costuming. And some of you may be thinking, oh Mina, this is a movie with a primarily young audience, like what are you expecting? And to that, I raise you. Freaky Friday, The Parent Trap. Maybe what I'm really trying to say is that Lindsay Lohan needs to get her ass back into Hollywood. <laughs> Seriously, I don't expect teen movies to be Oscar worthy. I just think that if you are making a movie that's primarily targeting teens and tweens, you need to understand the messages that you're putting into these movies. And that's my biggest problem at the end of the day. Telling kids that they should just be travel vloggers and following the footsteps of their boyfriends, quite literally, because uh, he's like rich and privileged enough to say, screw you to college and just travel the world. I think that's a pretty shaky message. I wouldn't encourage kids to do that. Okay, everyone, this is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've seen He's All That, if you've seen She's All That, what your thoughts are, which one you liked better, and I'll see you next time. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.